Watch out, NVIDIA, the 7900 XTX, if you overclock it, it could beat the RTX 4090. This AI chip is going to put NVIDIA to shame. There is always a ton of speculation that AMD is going to destroy NVIDIA with their next graphics cards. It starts to get you thinking, like when these cards are so expensive and a very small amount of the population is actually going to buy them, does it really matter what company has the fastest GPU in the world? Would things change? if AMD had the fastest GPU in the world. Oh, we're gonna talk about that right after this word from our sponsor. If you're anything like this, Microsoft is coming to get you and wants to charge $200 for Windows 11. That's why our only hope is SCD key. With them, you can get Windows 10 Pro for a low price and upgrade it for free to Windows 11. Once you get to check out, make sure to use code VEX for an extra 25% off of this already great deal and just choose your preferred payment method and you will be emailed your code. Working with SCD keys, all of their codes have come from OEM manufacturers and they're completely safe, so no need to worry about that. Again, huge thanks to today's sponsor. Make sure to use code VEX and let's get back into it. Obviously, I just talked about how these cards are so expensive. I don't own them. Okay, so I'm gonna be showing other people's benchmarks in this video. Broke ass bitch. It's clear that the RTX 4090 is the fastest card out there right now. It's undisputed. I know many people are gonna say the 7950 XTX is going to be coming from AMD at some point in time, but the 7900 XTX is already the full fat Navi 31 die. They can only actually overclock that card to get the 7950 XTX. Nvidia still has room to make a 4090 Ti. Instead of having six, 16,384 CUDA cores, instead the 4090 Ti could have 18,176 CUDA cores. But this trend of Nvidia being on top for performance has been going on for generations and generations. The 3090 Ti, the 2080 Ti, the 1080 Ti, even the 980 Ti, and they've been on top of market share as well. With these combined, it makes you wonder, is Nvidia on top because they have the fastest card on the market, or is it for some other reasons and this is just a coincidence? Because admittedly, it's really fun to see the fastest card on the planet break new boundaries that we've never seen graphics cards hit before. Nvidia announced the 4090 in this video, an hour 40 minute keynote with about two minutes in it about the 4090, and it has 19 million views. But then you also look at like how many people, that's really zoomed in. And you also look at how many people actually own a 4090, the fastest card on the planet. It's like combined with the price, the RTX 4090 doesn't make up a huge percentage of like the, the, the actual GPU market. I will admit though, more people do own a 4090 than I thought, but it's still relatively low. Cause like based on this percentage, I mean like every one in 200 people own a 4090 and that doesn't really sound right to me. Even though so little people can get their hands on that flagship card. Well, there must be something to it because AMD consistently continues to chase that top spot. They hyped people up here for the 7900 XTX and the, based on the numbers that AMD said, it was probably gonna get decently close to a 4090 at $600 less than that product. Back in 2017, AMD released Vega and many people were asking, do we wait for, for Vega or do we get a GTX 1080 Ti instead? But Vega never really lived up to what a 1080 Ti was, it actually only kept up with the GTX 1080 and competed with that. Yeah, it costs less than the 1080 Ti, but this was AMD's top end competition. But having that top dog spot for Vega didn't work out. And years before, AMD even went in with the R9 Fury X. Like this guy had HBM memory and 4,996 memory bit bus, a really cool GPU. And it was liquid cooled, which made it kind of odd in the market. It was, only just competing the 980 Ti at that time. And this might be a little bit of fine wine stuff here because in benchmarks when this card released, it was behind the 980 Ti in almost every case. And I think there are two ways that having the fastest GPU on the market can affect the company as a whole. Okay, so the first would be the public perception side of things. So having the best GPU means that you have prestige, you have honor and inadvertently this prestige instills trust in the market. Because even if you aren't buying that $1,600 4090, you're buying a product from the same company that made it. 
Then the second thing is the logical side of this. And that's because technically, if you have the fastest GPU on the market, that means your technology that made it is probably better. I mean, that's not guaranteed. Back to that first one though. When most people buy graphics cards, this might be surprising or it might not be surprising to you, but this is a big investment. Even a $300 graphics card isn't cheap. So your GPU is a big investment. It's probably the most expensive part of your computer. But at the same time, the average person, most people don't know the intricacies of the GPU market. And I'm going to put it blunt. Most people look at the market and they see big number that mean good. Most people aren't like us nerds and don't understand all of the marketing mumbo jumbo that's going on, okay? People trust Apple's marketing. And Nvidia has been doing a similar thing with frame generation. They have conflated the numbers of it, these fake frames, to make their, their numbers artificially look larger than they are. And for the average person, that does look pretty good. But I think uh, as a community, we've actually done a pretty good job of educating people not to take those numbers at face value. And big number go up mean good with like 19 million views on the announcement of the 4090. Having the fastest GPU on the planet will reach a more mainstream audience than most other things. But there's another level to this whole public perception thing. AMD fails to reach the, the level of performance of Nvidia's top end cards so frequently. Like they try to go for it with like the 7900 XTX. It didn't seem like they were actually targeting the 4090, but they sure as hell made a lot of people believe that they were. And AMD seems to consistently aim high and then actually deliver way lower than the expectations actually were. This can kind of make us think of AMD keeps doing this over and over and over again. Can we trust them to deliver on expectations. But there was one time that AMD didn't set their expectations too high, and that was the 5000 series. So RDNA 1, a $400 graphics card was AMD's top end card. Compared to Nvidia's 2080 Ti <laughs> that costed $1,000, I mean, that's a pretty stark difference when it comes down to it. And AMD's 5700 XT at $400 actually competed pretty much directly in performance, as you can see here, with the RTX 2070 from Nvidia. But the 2070 costed $500. AMD was coming in $100 less, performing about the same. Our DNA one was very competitive at the time, and it's because it was practical. It's because AMD didn't aim so high and beyond. And this type of competition scared Nvidia and they had to release a refresh because 20 series was so bad that they released super, okay, they, super graphics cards. And I think nowadays AMD's 5700 XT is actually their third most popular graphics card that isn't integrated graphics. So if you can't have that top end fastest card on the market, then you should probably focus on your strengths like AMD has in the past. And this would also manage the community's expectations of AMD a lot more. But let's go back to that second point though, the logical side of this. And for reference, when a chip maker like Nvidia or AMD creates a generation of graphics card products, they make a full fat version of that chip. Like for example, say the 4090, even though the 4090 isn't actually the full Ada Lovelace chip as we talked about earlier, there's still room for a 4090 Ti. Just take the 4090 for example. They make that full chip and then they take that same chip and basically cut it down to bring the prices down and then move down the product stack so that you know, that you have the other options available to you. Nvidia then has the power to control what kind of performance you get at each tier. And that control is extremely important because AMD doesn't have that luxury. When AMD has to react to what, whatever Nvidia is doing, and then they have to try to beat Nvidia at the prices that they set. Sometimes they can, and sometimes they can't. And obviously this whole model can be really bad for us as consumers because when AMD is struggling to deliver on their technology, kind of like how our DNA three is going at this current moment, this allows Nvidia to do whatever they want. And we've seen with this generation, we've seen a lot of hot steam and garbage come out. I mean, they just released a $500 4060 Ti with 16 gigabytes of VRAM on a 128 bit bus. 
But would it be any different if AMD was the one that had the fastest GPU on the planet? What I think would happen is obviously it's going to make headlines that AMD's beating Nvidia. They got the top dog and maybe those headlines and the, the raw performance will build a little bit more trust in the community to maybe start going to AMD. It's like, whoa, what are they cooking over there? Some good stuff. But obviously AMD hasn't had that long string of the fastest GPU on the, in the world for generation on generation like Nvidia has they could undercut nvidia in price amd also likes those margins on their products so we've seen that amd doesn't tend to push nvidia all that hard they launch their products at higher prices than they probably should be and then they lower them over time and they don't get a ton of sales at launch and then they get a bad reviews and everything and then over time they start to come back to earth and people actually start to buy them and that strategy allows amd to make good margins on their products because they can follow whatever nvidia is doing and not really disrupt it but also be another option for people and i think i just cracked the code of how amd always messes up their marketing i think they do it on purpose but would it matter if amd had the fastest gpu in the world fanboys would be happy i know that for a fact it doesn't really matter who has the fastest gpu in the world it's really fast okay it's it's faster than you need and probably costs more than you could ever afford stop complaining just buy a 4090 you broke ass bitch. but i want to know what you think do you think it would help if amd had the fastest gpu on the market i don't think it'd make that much of a difference the perception of amd wouldn't change a whole lot in my opinion but Maybe you have some extra thoughts. So let me know in the comments below. And that's been it for me. Y'all have a good one and uh, peace out.